Well, thank you. Um, I'm Alan Bame. I'm the uh, global CTO and VP of IT innovation for the Procter & Gamble company. And I just wanted to share a little bit of some thoughts around IoT and really more IoT in the edge and what's happening in business. In hearing uh, the, uh, the opening keynote today, it was interesting how we're hearing more and more about edge computing, and that's really what I wanted to focus on. So P&G, as you can see in the video, has a number of different brands and a number of different brand families. Today, and for the last few years, many of these have already been connected, and you probably have many of these devices, many of these products in your home. And the devices themselves and or holders for these devices or associated technology will become connected more and more in the future. So as we move forward, we have to remember IoT is everywhere. And we, our phones are one of the key. They're certainly in our cars. As I mentioned, the Oral-B toothbrush has been out in the market with Bluetooth connectivity that can help you improve not only how you brush, but how your children brush. You know, gone are the days when you used to have to stand over your kids at the sink and watch them and count the number of minutes that they're brushing their teeth and waiting and waiting and you turn around and the kid takes the toothbrush and moves it out of the mouth, at least my son did that. But now it, it's, it spies on the kids in some ways. It tells you what's going on. It gives you the information so that as an adult, it also frees up your life and it gives you the ability to do things all through Bluetooth. And again, this has been out there for, for a number of years already, and we're continuing to enhance it. Also on the edge, and this won an award, uh, this was actually at CES this year. Procter & Gamble joined CES for the first time in the company's 180 plus year history. And Aria was a device that is an air freshener that changes and revolutionizes how technology is applied. No longer do you just plug it in and sense come out, but connections to Alexa and other devices allow you now to control the scent that's in your house. If you don't like what your house smells like, if you want it to smell like Christmas, if you want it to smell like other things, through voice activated commands, you can now do that because we've changed the technology. In addition, on the la one of the last the photos that we had on the last slide in the, in during the video was another interesting piece. There was, uh, we had a, uh, at, at CES, and we were very, very happy to win uh, some awards and get some notoriety, as I said. But there's a device now for all of you women in the audience, and maybe some men as well. It, you're used to putting on makeup on your entire face, and you cover your face with makeup, and this has been going on for years, tens of years, over a hundred years. Our new product that is we debuted at CES uses IoT, uses technology, uses vision processing real time and analyzes your skin and only applies drops of the makeup that's needed in those specific areas of where it needs to be applied. It's again, the technology is advancing all about the internet of things. And of course, as one of the largest manufacturers in the world with factories in over 105 different countries, our industrial IoT and our industrial lines are changing the world. We produce over, we touch over five billion consumption units a day, if you think about that, with all the different products. To be able to do things at that scale, and we heard earlier the talk about how the people in the factories do not want to afford any downtime for changes, they don't want to take anything out, there's a lot of skepticism with cloud, which means, again, we have to start thinking about the edge and that's what we're doing. It is a combination of the cloud and the edges that we heard, but I believe, and I've been saying this for a number of years, that the edge is actually gonna be more important. It was about 15 years ago when Mark Andreessen and Ben Horowitz first set up Andreessen Horowitz, there was a small group of us that had gathered for an advisory session. And it was 15 years ago, we were talking about the challenges of latency that were being brought on by the then move to a mobile society. Well, that mobile society is here. 15 years ago it was emerging, but we still have not addressed all the latency issues, and that's something that we have to look at. So how many of you have been upset? You're waiting in front of something, you're trying to get a message. I just had that happen earlier today. It was a, a, the, uh, the device was trying to, to determine, was it gonna connect to the Wi-Fi? Was I blocked? Was it gonna try to connect via uh, 3G connection because the connectivity wasn't that great? and I was just getting frustrated. But if you're in a world 
where you're looking for coupons on demand, if you're in a world where you need information, especially if you're in a vehicle driving or something's going on, we cannot wait. We have to have that. There are safety reasons. There's brand awareness reasons. There's just the good old customer experience reason. And we still aren't there. Now, all of this comes about because a lot of the IoT and most of the IoT today is still connected to clouds. And what I'm here to tell you is we are a multi-cloud company and the reason that we're a multi-cloud company is not all the clouds are the same. There are significant architectural differences and capabilities in each one of these clouds and they all have a purpose. We and other corporations have tried to force feed capabilities into different cloud providers. It does not work. You really need to go in and dig and figure out if it's a consumer play, which cloud is best for consumer. If it's industrial, what is best for connectivity for industrial. If it is a global, if you have global needs, there, there's certain clouds that are better. They will all tell you, all of the providers will tell you they're the same. The reality is they're not. Whether you're connecting your home, you're connecting light bulbs, you're connecting to compute systems, these are different. But the centralized clouds, even though they're distributed in multiple availability zones and multiple locations, they are not the same because the networks are not the same and the way you interact with these things. So we really need to be very cognizant of how we're looking at things in the future. And when I started to look for analogies here and trying to think, what does it really look like? I started to think it's really more about a brain. And our brain today is very effective because it controls our body. We still haven't gotten to the point where my brain can control somebody else's body over here in the audience, but it's very good for centralized processing. But the brain itself is actually broken into different regions, and each one of the different regions have different functionality and control different parts of the body. The question is, why aren't the clouds, and why haven't the clouds been developed that way? They are a one-size-fits-all. They are not meant for a distributed world. So we have to start thinking about how we're going to be approaching IoT more like a series of interconnected brains than it is about a single brain. The advent of mesh networking and other technologies from the, from the networking, tech, networking providers that are out there are going to enable this. But what this means is the application developers, the application owners need to start thinking differently. No longer are you going to have these big behemoth systems that are running in a central location. These applications are going to be distributed through different areas, all based on the user experience and the latency requirements that we need, which means that we have to start breaking the applications down. Thankfully, a company named Netflix a number of years ago really was the one that came out with the microservices architecture and has shown us the way and corporations are now adopting that at a greater and greater pace. The ability to start going to serverless computing, the ability to start doing things in containers more and more are going to allow this to happen and we're going to be ending up with what we call a composite based applications, composite based experiences where we're bringing things together real time on the fly in order to have that experience that we want. No longer are people looking at transactions. And we did some research last year. We went to, to 10 different cities. We interviewed 100 different people, some of them futurists, some of them brand people, some of them technologists. And there was a consensus among the group. And these were people from companies like Airbnb, as well as Mattel Toys, as well as cor uh, large corporations that are similar to P&G. And the consensus was, we are moving out of a transaction-oriented society faster and faster. We have to get to the experiences. Experiences mean we have to push to the edge. And if we're going to push to the edge, we need the technology providers to start enabling that to happen. It is happening now. It's not happening fast enough. Once we get there, we will then get to the point where we have a completely decentralized and interconnected IoT through various protocols, whether it's Bluetooth or whether it's Wi-Fi, through other, tech, other protocols that have yet to be established, but it's coming. And I would urge everybody here to start thinking about the future because the future probably is only two or three years out. So as I start looking for the, the paths forward, and I'm really starting, I've been struggling with this, as I said, for 15 years. 
is I'm looking for next generation distributed designs. As a CTO for a Fortune, you know, Fortune 50 company, what you end up finding is that many of the providers, many of our solution partners are coming to me, but not with these things. They're coming to me with things that are based on old architecture. They're coming to me with tools that have been re, you know, polished up a little bit and they look, they look shiny and new, but the reality is it's still an old three-tier architecture. It's an old approach to how we're gonna do compute. Even many of the cloud providers today that we think of as the modern SaaS cloud providers, when you start looking at them, what you find is they're actually under the covers, the dirty little secrets are that the architectural approaches and the technology that they've chosen and how they're using it is based on things 15 years ago. We need to get to that next generation in order for it to work. The only way, not the only way, but one of the ways that I think that we're gonna get there is through industry standards and consortiums. I shouldn't say standards, but solutions. The reality is industry standards and standards bodies take forever to get anything done. With the speed of change that's going on in our business, the amount of transformation that we have underway, I can't wait two, three, four, five years for standards to evolve. I'm gonna have to go out, and I've actively talked to my counterparts at some very large corporations around the world and we are forming our own consortiums. We are starting to work together ourselves because of the lack of cooperation or the lack of coming together as an industry in general within the technology groups. So I think we're going to start seeing consortiums form, solutions coming from the consortiums, all based on interoperable standards. The last thing that we, any of us want is to be locked in as a corporation to any given technology. I know some of you providers out there would love to lock us in, but we believe in abstracting ourselves both from the business process and the logic as well as the technology. And that's only way it's gonna come together is through some type of open interoperability that we're able to create. And then of course, what I'll say is sort of the holy grail that's out there. And this is something that I've been watching we're starting to play with as a corporation, as I talk to more and more corporations, 5G. And 5G has been rolled out in about six cities in the US. Unfortunately, Europe is moving faster in 5G than the US is. Countries in Asia are moving faster than the United States is. We could find ourselves trailing and losing the race for interconnectivity here in the United States if we do not do something to move quicker, if we do not start putting pressure on our telco providers, if we do not start putting pressure on the government regulators in order to make this happen, we need to get 5G. The closest thing to 5G that I've seen that I can borrow for a corporation is what the gamers have done. And if you think about mobile gaming, the mobile gamers will never tolerate latency. Mobile gaming means that you have to cooperate, you have to interact real time because you have a shared goal or a shared mission that you're on. That's no different than what any of us corporations are doing. The problem is we're not playing a game. We're producing real products and services. We're touching people's lives. We have to worry about safety. We have to worry about consistency in what we're delivering. So we're gonna have to rely on the advent of 5G and what that means for us. So I know that we were running a little late. I promised the producers I'd try to cut this about five minutes short, and I think I've done a pretty good job. I wanna thank you very much for your time. I wanted to leave you with some things to think about. Hopefully this will open your minds a little bit and think about what we need to do in order to move forward. Thank you very much.